Hello YouTube community, this is Prophet David Howard Jr. with another broadcast for you. A broadcast is very important and I believe all of them are important. But this particular broadcast is very important because this broadcast is to help you to recognize the false prophet. Understand something. I know that we want to believe that everything in the world is true. I, 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 you know, I work with people and I come, I cross paths with people that, to be quite honest with you, I'm just tired of arguing with them because it's like they're naive. They think that everything in the world is the way that it appears. They believe in everything that the world puts out. But I want you to know that every preacher that's telling you, thus said such and such, and here's what God has to say, and this, that, and the other, is not from the Most High. And he led me to do this broadcast because a lot of people are praying for him to help them to recognize the false prophet. Well, take notes on this and get prepared because we're going to go into details on recognizing the false prophet. <clears throat> the first scripture I want to go to is a familiar passage of scripture that the Messiah himself gave us concerning false prophets. And I, if we play the guessing game, I'm sure you can figure out what scripture I'm talking about exactly. The scripture is found in Matthew chapter 7. And I'm going to read from verse 15 to verse 23 because you need to understand something. There's a lot of people that you thought was on their way to heaven that's in hell right now. There's a lot of people that you thought were true prophets that aren't for, aren't true prophets. I had a dream some a while back when I was one of those believers. I was in Christianity and I was one of those believers that everything I see on Christian TV, I just embraced it with a strong embrace and and defended it and everything. <clears throat> but then one night I was asleep. As I was asleep. The Most High began to reveal to me that everybody on Christian TV is not from Him and is not with Him. Let me tell you something. Some of them preachers on Christian TV don't believe in them at all. They're atheists. They're just using that as a job the same as you may not believe in the product that you produce on your job. That's just the way it is sometimes. But your job pays good so you continue to go to work and produce that product prime example some years back we had a company in Wisconsin called Wisconsin Color Press and some of the people that worked at Wisconsin Color Press were claiming to be believers but here's the problem though Wisconsin Color Press produced porn they printed pornography for various groups in the porn industry and they had the, one of the reasons why <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. But one of the reasons why they stopped producing at Wisconsin Color Press is because people were not producing to the level that the companies that they produce for require. And as a result, some of those companies began to pull out, began to pull out and go with other publishers. Because people in Wisconsin Color Press were like this when they were supposed to basically be uh, getting those catalogs and getting those magazines together for these various groups they were in there like just looking at it and the work wasn't getting done and I remember it was a temp agency that still exists it was called QPS back then it's like I was fresh from school you know I really didn't have a job yet fresh out of college you know I didn't finish college so I was looking through temp agencies for a job and the first thing they told me is make sure that you continue to do your work but they having a problem with people out there um, just stopping what they're doing and looking at the books and I want you to know that's the same problem that we having in churches today it's like First of all, the wrong product is being produced just like it was constant color press. And that wrong product is captivating people's interest 
and they're not getting what needs to be getting out there. And then the flip side, the perverted example is the same thing happened there. The people were not getting the product and 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 get fulfilling those orders that those companies have required. The product was perverse to begin with, but it's the same scenario that went into play. And what happened? The company went out of business. Now, just like if these preachers, if we don't get in in these biblical faith, if we don't rise up and start preaching the biblical faith, we're going to lose the people. And we're already losing the people in these cities because a lot of preachers act like they're scared of the people. Like they only want to deal with them when they're behind the pulpit and when it comes to getting money. But they don't want to get out there and witness because for one, let's be honest, most of them are get eaten alive out there. There's people out there right now that believe a number of things that if you're not doing your research and you don't understand these things, these people will eat you alive. And these preachers know that and they don't want to corrupt their business because the church has become a business it's about collecting money and entertaining the public and giving them something to do instead of giving them something to believe and follow which was the original purpose of it and to prepare them for the last day when the Messiah will return and will judge the earth and will we'll put all the sinfulness in its place one time for good. But what do you see in church? Hey, how you doing, brother? Hey, how you, you know, you smiling, dress nice, but yet when it comes down to it, you're not affecting the level and the quality and the standard of life in your cities and in your countries. For one, because your average preacher today just want to say Jesus loves you and has a plan for your life. No. You're supposed to tell him the Messiah loves you and he's giving you the opportunity to get right with him. He'll give you the everlasting life but he's not going to give it to you if you reject him. He's going to give you the punishment that you deserve because of your sins. You don't hear that type of message. And what do people do? Ah, oh, you judgmental. Why are you judging? Let me let me show you something about judging. And I got a, a YouTube that I did on judging. Judging is when you give the final sentence and punishment for that person. Not when you tell them what the final sentence is. But when you give them the final sentence. Like if I told you, I don't care what you say, you go into hell no matter what you do. That's, I'm, I'm judging. But if I tell you, the scripture says that if you don't repent, you're going to perish. You're going to go to hell. The scripture made the judgment. The Most High made the judgment, not me. So don't let these devils trick you into preaching weak messages. We don't need any more weak preachers. Now, Matthew chapter 7 verse 15 says this. Beware, or be aware, of false prophets which come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, and a corrupt fruit tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then he said in verse 23, Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. But now we see people nice and comfortable and safe. They go into these congregations. They go into these churches every single week. And they're not being challenged. They're not being confronted. And why? Because there's false prophets. Because they outwardly they appear to be sheep. 
But Emily there are ravening wolves, kind of like the story of Little Red Robin Hood. The wolf was inside of of the grandmother, uh, a grandmother costume, masquerading to be this nice, gentle old woman, so that he can fulfill what he desired to begin with to eat. That story is perfectly fitting for these congregations. And it's a video on YouTube where the guy was basically told it, said that he never believed anything in the scripture and that he's going to show how gullible people is. So he went around doing crusades and he was basically collecting large amounts of money and dumping the bags of money out on the bed. It also reminded me of the movie with Steve Martin, Leap of Faith, where Steve Martin was basically... He, he had hired help and his ministry was like a sideshow. But he's telling you to beware of false prophets. Which come to you inwardly, they are ravening wolves, basically. So the first thing you need to understand when recognizing a false prophet is he ain't going to have a character. Remember, the Messiah said, he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He said, you cannot bear fruit except you abide in the vine. Now, I want to go to it, and I'm going to read it to you for, for yourself and for your learning. In John chapter 15, it says this. I am the vine, and my father is the true hu is the husband. This is why he said, by their fruits you will know them. Because he basically said that if they in me, they're going to act like me. Now, again, that don't mean you become this little wimp in the world. If you're a man, you got a family, you're supposed to protect your family. You know, the Messiah was here for a purpose, you know, and that was to seek and save that which is lost. And while we're doing it, we don't become little wimps in the process. And, you know, you got people, and I said this before, they believe that if they allow a man to rape them because they don't want to hurt or harm that person due to these scriptures, <clears throat> to tell you to resist not evil. Let me tell you something. You misunderstanding those scriptures. There's no way the Most High is going to hold against you what you do to somebody that's trying to harm you. Now, of course, it's going to be mentioned when you get judged, but I don't believe that's something that He will punish you for in the day of judgment based on the scripture. And even if you look at uh, Proverbs chapter 6, He talked about the seven things that He hates. He didn't say people that shed blood. He said people that shed innocent blood. In other words, that innocent is there because he wants you to understand that he don't like violence. But sometimes he even knows that it's necessary. And a person is breaking in your house, trying to molest your kids, trying to rape you, trying to do those types of things. That's not an innocent person. So, it says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. That's why you got preachers preaching, and they just a, a, a mess. They just mud. They just completely dirty and nasty in the way that they live their lives because they've been taken away. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Remember, he said in First Romans chapter 1 that he'll uh, give people over. And that's why you got people out there to be trying to preach and stuff. And I look at them like, ain't you the same person that you done already slept with three people in the building already? But yet, you always trying to quote scripture? See, a lot of people been given away. Been given up to a reprobate mind because the Most High only uses those that are in the vine. And He only cuts off, He cuts off things and and, and continues to transform and cultivate the life of the people that come to him and are truly saved. And that's why he, that's the first thing he mentioned in regards to a false prophet. Now, it says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself. So all that little fake sanctimonious stuff, get yourself right? Nah, that's false. You believe and you obey, but you allow the Most High to cultivate because you're not the husband. Your pastor is not the one that's supposed to dig around and stuff. 
Your pastor is only supposed to confirm what you are already learning and to warn those who ain't in the fold yet, who ain't in the sheepfold yet. Now, it says, Abide me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide, abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. That's why you have people, billions of people, following a certain faith, but they still act racist. Okay, if you're following the God of the universe, who created all shades of color, and all different people, but yet you following the, the evil people, and, 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 and I'm going to tell you flat out who I'm talking about. I live in the city of Milwaukee. And you got all these foreign store owners, right? Here, I'm a preacher, but they don't know that. They're looking at the fact that I'm a, uh, what's called a black man. So they follow me around stores. That's racism. I told one of them to, to her face. I said, I wonder do you close the door like that when white people come in here. Because I came in the, in the store the morning after I basically got done working. And I was looking to buy some things. And as soon as I came in there, she had the door wide open where they'd be at behind the glass. And she closed the door and went behind it. But when the, the Europeans were coming, she had the door wide open. But yet, these are the people who represent the interests of the Most High? No, they're not. No, sir. Now, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it will, it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Now, a disciple is a trained, disciplined follower of another. So, when we are truly in the faith, we, we are disciples, which means that He's going to transform your life. You're not going to, it's 2013, 2015, you're still a homosexual. Or it's 2013, and you've been a homosexual since 1996, but yet you go to church every week. And it's like your lifestyle is not changing. Your lifestyle is not being transformed and conformed into what the scripture says it should be. That's what he was talking about with the false prophets, and that's what he was talking about with the people that shall say, Lord, Lord, and he shall tell them, depart from me, ye that work in equity. I never knew you. It's the people, basically, that their lives do not demonstrate the things that they say out of their mouth. And a false prophet makes false predictions. That's another point. He makes false predictions. One example of this, and I gave it on my other broadcast, my radio broadcast, is the Jehovah Witnesses. Uh, uh, Charles Russell and Rutherford between them predicted that the world would end five times. Rutherford went on to say that millions in the world shall never die. But they also predicted that the Messiah had appeared invisible. When the scripture says that when he comes, he's coming in the clouds with power and great glory and every eye shall see him. See a false prophet, not only, here's another uh, point for you, a false prophet is not going to believe or teach about the God of the scriptures. The Trinity is a false teaching. And no prophet, no true prophet is going to teach you God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Now, some people say, well, you used to teach that. And, you know, I am guilty of teaching that. And, and it was false for me to teach that because in Deuteronomy 6, and four said that the Most High is one God. The Messiah himself, the one whose name they changed to Jesus. And by the way, if you hear this broadcast, you need to understand something. You need to start calling him by his real name or calling him by his title. If you don't trust in the name that Yehoshua, Yeshua, which is his true transliterated, translated Hebrew name, then just call him the Messiah. Every time you address him, call him the Lamb, the Son of Man, or the Messiah. Every time you address God, call him the Most High if you don't trust in that. Or call him I Am. Or the I Am that I Am. Call him by his title if you don't trust the name. Now, I'm in Deuteronomy. Or, or now I want to go to Jeremiah chapter 23. Because this is the longest scripture that I'm going to mention. So I want to go to this one first. 
In Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 9 through 29, he talked about false prophets and he talked about how a true prophet's sermons would be. Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. <clears throat> All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine have overcome. Because of the Most High and because of the words of His Holiness, for the land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing the land mourneth, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. Look at verse 11, Jeremiah 23. For both the both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness. Now, I want to show you something. Now, in the scripture, in Ezekiel chapter 36, the Most High said that when, when people come to him, basically, that he'll give them a new heart and a new spirit, and that he will save them from all their uncleanness, and that he will continuously uh, uh, basically develop that person. Well, this is something that we can, one way that we can recognize a false prophet. And what I want to look at basically with the false prophets is if you're a true prophet, then your lifestyle will and your sermons will become stronger and stronger and more in tune and in line with what the scripture says it should be. Not this day you involved in this uh, scandal. You got you got preachers that basically they claim to be singers and claim to be preachers for the Most High and they preach sermons. But then at the next breath or the next moment they're making babies out of wedlock with women that they're not even married to. Now, let me ask you a question. Did the Messiah do that? No, he didn't. And anybody that say he did is a liar. They're a liar. Plain and simple. Point. Just, just, this is a fact. But then you have these guys that's claiming to be in him that are making babies out of wedlock. That's what he's talking about when he said both prophet and priest are profane. He's speaking in terms of those who claim that he is the anointed one. Like he said in uh, Matthew chapter 24, they, claim, they say he's the Christ, but then they deceive many or mislead or lead wrongfully. That's what mislead, that's what the word deceive means. He said, In mine house have I found their wickedness, said the Most High. Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, said the Most High. I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. Now, he's talking in terms of, of, of historically in those times that the prophet Jeremiah was in the earth and just like a lot of people are starting to adapt the Sumerian teachings about the Anunnaki and all of these different things as if it's the truth that's what he's talking about here I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing a horrible thing he said this is a horrible thing watch what he says next they commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers. You can add these to recognizing a false prophet. A false prophet commits adultery. He has sex with another woman on his wife. Now, walk in lies. They, they basically teach stuff that's not true. And they say that the Messiah, that the Most High said it. They strengthen also the hands of the evildoer. Let me show you how they do this. If you're not coming against the evil in your world, you can't be scared of these gangbangers, drug dealers, skinheads, um, uh, Muslims or anything. Because if you don't come against them, then you strengthen in their head. Because if, if, if you don't oppose them and show them what they're doing is wrong and what they're saying is wrong, then they're going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. That's what he's talking about. That none do it return from his wickedness. See? When you don't teach people the word, like he said in Isaiah, when his judgments are in the earth, the people learn righteousness. Whether they want to learn it or not, 
If they hear it continuously from your mouth and seeing it continuously from your actions, where you avoiding that which the scripture does not approve of, where you speaking against it and you not engaging in it yourself, then they have no other choice but to learn. Now, a false prophet recognized this. He's going to teach and, and talk about the things which people want to hear. Money coming. Money is good. I like money. You like money. Everybody in their right mind likes to have money. But these particular uh, false prophets, they're going to make merchandise out of you like Peter said. And they're going to focus on the things that you want to hear the most. They even do researchers like I do research on on things that's happening in the world, stuff like that. They'll do research and see um, best market for this, how to do this, how to do that, in terms of building their congregations, not in terms of learning so that a person can be saved. It says, They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof of Gomorrah, as Gomorrah. This is uh, this is Jeremiah chapter 23. Verse 15, Therefore thus saith the Messiah of hosts, the Most High of hosts, concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink of water, drink the water of God. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profane is gone forth into all the land. In other words, the congregation, when people, and you'll see this in your own life, People will want to be around the believers. And a lot of times, they just want to see if those believers are going to approve of what they do. Because when they get the approval from, from the believers and from the preachers, then they feel, oh, I'm good, I'm okay. Even though they won't admit that. That's what he said, profane is gone forth into all the land. Thus said the Most High of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you, they make you vain. Now, look up the word vain and you tell me that your average preacher in this world ain't going to make somebody vain. Because he's going to tell you exactly what you want to hear. And I'm going to go to uh, Matthew chapter 4 before we close this. I'm going to go to a couple more scriptures. But I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 4 and show you an example of how whichever fallen one that was in that wilderness with the Messiah... How he basically did the same thing to him. Or tried to do the same thing. Now. They make you vain. In other words they tell you. You should have this. You should have that. You should be this. You should be that. And even if it's true. In some cases it is. That makes you vain. When you're always thinking about yourself. It's, they speak a vision of their own heart. And not out of the mouth of the most high. They say still unto them that despise me, the Most High has said, you shall have uh, peace. In other words, that reminds me of how people be out there telling people that despise the scripture, that the Most High loves them and has a plan for their life. When you're supposed to balance that out with the truth. He's giving you options. One, repent and be saved and escape his wrath. Two, don't repent, stay in unbelief. And be risen into your new body to be burned and skinned and tormented with pain. They're not telling them that. They tell them, oh, you'll be okay, you have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. When a true prophet, that's another thing. False prophets rarely ever preach about the destruction that the Most High is going to bring on man and upon the earth. And if you got a preacher that don't talk about these things, you already know he's a false prophet. Verse 18. For who has stood in the counsel of the Most High and have perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Most High is gone forth. And fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. See, this is what we're supposed to be teaching. The anger of the Most High shall not return until he hath executed, until he hath performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfect. I have not seen these prophets yet. He said, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken unto them, yet they prophesied. 
And this is where you get all these weak sermons from. But if they had stood in my counsel, look, watch what he said. Look at verse 22. Because this will show you how to recognize false prophets. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. I'm going to show you what he meant by that. Anybody that can be saved, when they hear the word of a true prophet, they're going to turn from their evil ways. What I mean by that, he wants everybody to be saved, but let's be honest, some people will never change the way they think and they will never repent. So, he's saying right here, the true prophet has a strong uh, uh, word that will show you the evil doings and show you the wickedness of your ways and make you want to change. Am I a God at hand, said the Most High, and not a, a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, said the Most High? Do I not feel heaven and earth, said the Most High? I have heard what the prophets said. They prophesied lies in my name. And like I said earlier, you cannot preach a sermon and look in the camera and make a prophecy without that prophecy being for every single person that's watching you at that point in time. If it does not come to pass in every life, it is a false prophecy. And they could use fear taxes all they want. He told you, don't fear them. Don't worry about them. It says, How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Remember, that word Baal is, is the same as Lord. And basically, this world ain't even learning the true names of the Most High. In fact, there's so many false variations of the name that when you're dealing with the name, it becomes a dangerous topic for that reason. Now look at verse 28. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, said the Most High? Is not my word like as a fire? When you hear this word, it's like as a fire. And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Now, I told you I want to go to Matthew chapter 4. Give you, I want to sum this up in another five minutes or so. Here's some things to look for. False prophet is going to preach what you want to hear. He's not going to be a man of character. He's going to have scandal in his life. He's going to get you to follow after other gods, which a lot of religions, and including Christianity, how we are taught that we don't have to keep the Sabbath. How the Most High does not want or require that we keep the Sabbath. When in Exodus chapter 31, it said the Sabbath is forever. So the false prophets will change doctrines. They'll change the days, they'll change the names, they'll preach uh, false, weak sermons to tell, strengthen the hand of evildoers, in other words, and makes it seem as if it's okay for them to do what they do, say what they say, think what they think, because they're not uh, reproving it and rebuking it in their sermons. So a false prophet basically gives the people what they want to hear and makes them feel safe. A false prophet will make you feel good, but he's not going to make you want to change. Because he's not, going, he's not in the vine. So he doesn't have the power to make you want to change. Now, in Matthew chapter 4, I want to look at the three things that the Messiah told this evil spirit that was there uh, with him when he was in the wilderness. Remember, he hadn't eaten, so he was feeling hungry. Which is... Usually the evil spirits always come when you're lacking something. Whether it's money, whether you, you commit some type of sin. The evil spirits are always going to come and try to finish you off. And I did a sermon on depression. Because one of the things he tried to get him to do is to cast himself down. First thing he did, tried to get him to prove himself. See, the false prophet will always try to get the true prophet to prove himself. You be the son of God, command these stones become be made bread 
In other words, a false prophet will make himself appear to be more anointed than other prophets, than other preachers. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Most High. Then he told him, you shall not tempt the Most High. Then he said, you shall worship the Most High, and him only shall you serve. So if you're just serving your pastors, you're coming up short already. Now, I want to go to um, first, Second Timothy chapter 4. It says, preach the word, be in, instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That time is now. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables like treating uh, what you want the most high to give you. Comparing it to a slot machine. Money coming to me now. You know, if you confess something that you don't believe in your heart or the most high does not believe is appropriate for you, it's not going to happen. I don't care what these uh, preachers say. Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. And I'm going to sum up a lot of things for you to look for after I read this scripture. Verse 20 through 22 says this, But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thy heart, how shall we know what word? How shall we know the word which the Most High has spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Most High, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Most High hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. In other words, if it's from the Most High, when they say it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen exactly like they say. See, the false prophets they they prophesy lies. They make merchandise of the people. Inwardly, they're hypocritical. Mm -hmm. They don't have a character. They, they basically, they're going to give you what you want to hear. They're not going to tell you what you need to hear about what could happen to you if you don't get it right. They are secretly with the fallen ones. They're not saved to begin with. The Most High didn't send them, and it's going to show, because like it says, by the fruit you should know them. When it's talking about, it's talking about his character, but it's also talking about the people that he produces. That's why he told the Pharisees that they travel land and sea for one single proselyte. And then when they get them, they make them twofold the child of hell that they are. Which is what happens. That's what happens with, in the false prophet's ministry. The false prophet is not going to have the stamp of the Most High upon his ministry or upon his sermons and we ain't talking about money money is an earthly thing now the most high will provide money but you can't you can't judge a prophet based on uh finance status because remember i showed you in uh second P second timothy chapter four how people will not endure sound doctrine and if you look at Ma uh john chapter three he talked about that too i'll just go to it while i'm closing John chapter 3 it says this as you read John chapter 3 when you get down to verse 19 it says this and this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light that's why you can't go by numbers because their deeds were evil. In other words, they want preachers that's not going to shine the light on what they do. For everyone that doeth evil hated the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. In other words, it's basically saying that when a person is truly trying to be saved, they're going to look for those preachers that's going to tell them what they need to hear. When they just basically trying to look righteous and trying to see, you know, people are trying to make themselves not look too evil. That's their way of saying by going to church, look, I'm not that evil. See, I go to church. But look at their lifestyle ain't being changed. That's why you see these preachers who perform good, 
got good singing choirs, but yet and still their own personal life is full of greed and extortion. The greed being they extorting money, telling people they're supposed to pay a tithe and making the tithe money when it wasn't money. But anyway, that's another subject. And they tell the people what they want to hear. I know you're saying, well, you keep saying that. That's important because that's the main thing that the Most High revealed about the false prophets. So maybe at a later date we'll do a part two, but I want to close this broadcast. I believe I gave you enough to, to rely upon. Deuteronomy 18, 20 through 22, Matthew chapter 7, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Uh, read the book of 1 Peter and 2 Peter. And recognize these false prophets. Don't give them no money. Don't give them no time. Don't even bother with them. You, you can listen to what they say, but bounce what they say of what the scripture teach and off research that you do concerning these things. Thank you all for listening. And keep tuning in to these broadcasts on this YouTube. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. If you have any questions, send me a private message. And I'll answer your questions. God bless you all. May the Most High bless you and keep you. Give you knowledge and wisdom and understanding of His Most Holy Word. And may you be able to recognize these false prophets.